Yeah, my name is uh, Professor Kerry Cooper. I'm Professor of Organizational Psychology and Health at the Alliance Manchester Business School, the University of Manchester. I mean, my major focus of interest in my research and, and practice is on well-being in the workplace. And by well-being in the workplace, we don't mean sushi at your desk, uh, ping pong tables, um, bean bags. It's not about that. It's about how do you create a culture that enables people to cope with the pressures and stress on them, that gives them good work-life balance, that makes them feel fairly job satisfied and actually enhances their health and well-being rather than depletes it. By culture, I mean how are people managed? Are they allowed to work flexibly if they, if they can and want to? Uh, do they have a reasonable balance between home and work? Are their workloads manageable? Uh, are their deadlines realistic? Um, are they enabled to do the kinds of things they want to do? That, that means do they have control and autonomy over their job? Uh, or are people looking over their shoulder all the time, particularly their line manager? It's about the, what an individual employee experiences in the work environment. And, and the characteristics that make that up, in my view, what makes a well-being culture are the following. First, a line manager who manages people by praise and reward rather than fault finding. Second, a line manager, and we all have bosses from shop floor to top floor. So our boss, our line manager, enables us to work flexibly if we want to, recognizes when I'm not coping with my workload, gives me reasonable, achievable workloads. Also, ensures that I have good balance in my life. That means that I'm not been being sent emails on a Friday night uh, or on a weekend or while I'm on holiday or any time that would interfere with my private life unless it's absolutely essential. Because we all know that we need to, you know, some things are really important at given points of time. But a, a, a line manager, a boss who actually send you emails out of office hours consistently is damaging your health and well-being and particularly your outside relationships with your family. So that kind of, that's another kind of characteristic. Also, does the organization provide you with social supports if you need it? <clears throat> and by that I mean does it have opportunities for you to talk to people if you're having difficulties and problems? in your life generally. And what we call, if you're a bigger organization, I'll have something called an EAP, an Employee Assistance Program. A counseling service is provided outside which you can call up when you're having difficulties. Or some other support mechanism in the workplace. So I think really it's about the culture. It, it certainly isn't just about meditating at lunchtime. Nice as it is to do mindfulness at lunchtime, nice as it is to get somebody giving you fruit salad um, and giving you uh, smoothies uh, in the workplace, that's nice, an added benefit, but it, it is not what well-being is about. So well-being is about the work environment that you're in. Do you wake up in the morning and are motivated to go into the workplace and feel good about it? Do you, are, you made, are you valued and trusted by your employer to the extent that if you decide you want to work from home that day, you just do. As long as you achieve your objective at the end of the week, your boss does not care. And that's what work should be about. And unfortunately, in many work environments, it's not, we have the longest working hour, in the UK, we have the longest working hours in the developed world behind the United States. Um, we are contacted frequently by emails out of office hours. Uh, in contrast to the French law, uh, which was passed six months ago, uh, which says no line manager can send an email out of office hours to their subordinate. That means at night, weekends, or while they're on holiday. That's a French law. 
Now, I don't particularly, we don't particularly need a French law. What we need are people in a work environment, particularly our boss, to be very sensible out of office hours when they send us things to do. And that should be very minimal. I personally don't like the idea of a person's boss sending an email to them out of office hours, unless it's absolutely necessary. And I don't think uh, paying them for it is really a good idea because people will want to earn extra money. I think the rule should be, if it's really important at the weekend or at night or while you're on holiday, Holiday should be a no-no, I think, entirely, because it really can cause your family disruption when you're going on holiday with them. But say it's at night or at the weekend. If you want to send an email to somebody, it's got to be very important. I don't think they should necessarily be paid for it, because sometimes you do have to do that. And if also we're saying that people, and a lot of people want flexible working, which means working partly from home and partly from a central office, right? You can't forbid it. I think the law is silly in that respect because quite a lot of people, 40, 50% of people want to work partly from home, partly from a central office. So you're going to get, if you're going to work flexibly, emails at different points of time. It's just not overloading the family, basically, and finding a way. And any socially skilled line manager, and that's another problem in this whole arena of well-being, is do we have enough interpersonally and socially skilled line managers to understand when people aren't coping, to understand they have issues at home, don't dump on them while they have issues at home, to understand that, you know, uh, th this individual has, has an outside life and that's important to kind of honor that if they're to return the next day and do a good day's worth of work for you. So, what we need are more of these line managers. And they're fundamental to just the email issue, not just to the email issue, but to all aspects of an individual's life. Therefore, one of the really critical things work workplaces need to do is do an audit of all their managers from shop floor to top floor. And do they have the social skills? If they have them naturally, probably about 20 to 25% would, great no training needed, probably 50%, maybe more, need training on improving their social awareness and their EQ, emotional intelligence. And there may be people who should never be near people. Another, maybe 10 or 15% of people who get promoted on their technical skills, but are people incompetent. And if they are, they should never be put near people, give them a job unrelated to human beings, a technical job, but don't put them near them because they may be un totally untrainable. I think the whole issue of line managers pos possessing or not possessing the EQ, the emotional intelligence or social skills, I think is a national problem in every sector. So, for example, school teacher, really great, She's really good, or he's really good, at teaching and fantastic. But they only they see the only way they're going to get paid more is if they take a management job on. Like, so we have the pyramid system. So you have to be department head and then become a head teacher, right? And they may not be good at that, and they're certainly not trained at it. Or an engineer who's a great engineer who, to get ahead, has to go for managerial jobs. We see this all the time. People promoted to their, to a management job based on their technical expertise and not their people skills. It's a nightmare. And in my view, that leads to the UK. I think we have too many of them in the UK, in every sector. And that leads to the UK being seventh in the G7 on productivity per capita and 17th in the G20. It's bad news. Unless we get the right kind of line managers, well-being will not be achieved. Line managers do have a bigger impact in the SME sector, small and medium-sized businesses. In my view, there's no question about that. 
However, here's the interesting thing, and they do need the training like anybody in a middle-sized or large organization needs, whether it's private sector or public sector. Okay, but here's the interesting thing. The smaller the organization, even, the, even though maybe the line manager, because it's usually a owner manager, um, might have really good technical skills, but not the people skills, but he or she would understand that everybody matters and therefore they tend to be better at recognizing when people aren't coping, when they're giving them too much to do. So the irony is on work I have done, uh, uh, on, on reports I've done for the Chartered Management Institute on the quality of working life, the smaller the organization, the better the line manager is at understanding the issues that each individual employee they have has and helps the bigger the organization gets, the more remote it gets from the individual. The line managers there don't have the same kind of awareness of the issues. Because if you're managing a business, if you're an owner manager of a business of 30, 25 or 30 people, you know everybody. You know their problems at home. You know their kid is severely ill and you don't dump on them. And everybody matters. So the 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 better you, the better work environment you create, the more people are going to produce, the better for your business that you own. No, I, I think in bigger organizations, whether it's private sector or public sector organizations, I think they just, the tendency is to promote people on the basis of their technical expertise. So you're a great marketeer and you become marketing manager. It's a different job. You're a great social worker, really good with your clients, but to get more money and promotion, you have to go to a management job and you may be lousy at it or not be interested in it or not be trained to do it. It's that kind of thing. Therefore, if you're going to promote somebody with a good technical expertise, make sure they also have the people skills. If they don't, don't do it. Or make sure they get extensive training to do the job, one or the other. Line managers are the foundation stone from shop floor to top floor of a good well-being culture. You have the right people in place, then they will manage people properly, ensure that they recognize when they're overworked, they have too heavy a workload, when they've got problems at home, they will know them, they will see the signs that they're not coping, they will talk be open and more communicative and let them talk about the problems they have. And all of that will lead to a culture in which people feel valued, trusted, and you may find out, oh, well, you know, because I've got this problem of elder care issues with my parents who are, one of them has dementia, I really do need to work from home a lot more, right? And they let them. That is the kind of culture that you want to create in a work environment. In the end, it pays off. It looks like it might not, because people are not right in front of you in an office there for 10 hours a day. Uh, but you know, given technology, many people can work more flexibly than ever before. We don't need, except in certain jobs, of course, paste assembly lines to produce a car, nurses in a hospital. They can have flexible work shifts, but they have to be in a hospital. But a lot of our businesses are service-based businesses. They can, people can work much more, much more flexibly. Okay, if I was to give three tips to any business, the tips would be the following. Make sure you have the right bosses at every level of the organization, from shop floor to top floor. Make sure they may have the technical skills, but make an equivalent of the technical skills, their people and social skills. They have that that will work, but you have to have all of them. Everybody has to possess them. That's tip one. Tip two, don't work them long hours. Long, there's no evidence that people working consistently long hours are productive, quite the opposite. The evidence is if people work consistently long hours, they will get ill and they're less productive. So enable people to have good work-life balance. And I guess the, the third one would be would be about flexible working. It's not just the long hours. 
but trust people enough to determine when they work, where they work, how long they work, give them the options and trust them enough and they will deliver to you. And indeed, a lot of people who work flexibly, for example, work, say, substantially from home or half the time from home, tend to work longer actually, but they do it in the context of picking kids up from school, looking after an elderly relative or whatever they have to do in their private life and will do the work at night, but they'll deliver the bottom line, probably even working longer hours. Tips, therefore, the line manager, uh, not don't work people long hours, and associated with that is the emails, by the way. Do not send emails to people out of office hours. It is not good news. And then final, flexible working, trust them. Even in holidays, don't necessarily have limited holidays. Unlimited holidays, like Netflix do, like Virgin does, like a lot of companies are now doing, they won't necessarily take them, but you're communicating a message to them. The message is deliver to the bottom line. How you do it, when you do it, how many holidays you take, who cares? If you complete the job and do it, then enjoy your holidays.